Hello guys, uh, welcome back. My name is Vishal. In this video, let's have a look on the poly group in ZModeler of ZBrush. So before getting into this video, I just wanted to ask you one question. Can you tell me the difference between a normal map and a bump map? If yes, just put it in the comment section. So what is poly group? Poly group is a group of polygons which will have a different set of colors when you switch on the poly frame on your model. Uh, so it's a group of polygon or poly set in simple words. So I would like to access my Z modeler first by clicking on the brush palette here and then choose the Z modeler. And also I can choose that by pressing B, Z and M as a keyboard shortcut. So what I'm going to do here is hover the cursor on the polygon and hit spacebar and choose my polygon action to the poly group. So there are target and some modifiers here. So let me just uh, choose the default and then just click anywhere on the polygon face. And you should be able to see I'm getting a different color uh, to the selected polygon. Uh, if I just hold Alt after clicking, that keeps changing or cycling the colors there. And also, if I want to pick any of these two colors for, for my next poly groups, I'm going to uh, hold, click on that, hold Shift, and then start clicking that color there. Let's say if I want this color now, hold, click, hold Shift, and then start picking those colors there uh, for the newly clicking uh, polygons for poly groups. So this is uh, generally can be seen here uh, as uh, additive and pick existing. Uh, which are basically like uh, the way you're picking the polygroup colors. Uh, so we have different uh, targets. So I'm going to choose the all polygon action, all, all polygons target, and then choose the next uh, uh, thing, which is the three sides. So it comes in the target itself. So I'm going to select the three sides here. So I'll just click anywhere on the model. And then you should be able to see, I got different uh, poly, uh, poly groups uh, automatically defined. And this is defined based on the polygons facing in the Y axis, the Z axis and the X axis. Uh, so just when I click it, I should be able to see uh, the x-axis polygons are in red and uh, the z is in the green and the y is in the yellow. Uh, so three sides are automatically defined. When I choose this to six sides and you should be able to see the top and the bottom are different now. Uh, earlier when I just choose uh, to the three sides, uh, I get the top and the bottom same. So either six sides or three sides colors can be picked here. Okay. So let me just uh, uh, just have a look on uh, this particular existing poly groups and uh, instead of uh, picking overwrite i'll just choose additive and then click and you should be able to see the existing poly groups which are there are still existing but their color is keeping on changing uh, based on the i mean it's keeping on cycling the way i'm clicking it here continuously okay uh, so additive is that basically uh, so let me just go back and then just choose topological order now, topological order works this way just click on any of the face and you should be able to see there's a gradient uh, from the selected point going outside okay so that's how it works so if i just click here and that becomes the center of the gradient okay uh, you can just try that on a, a different set of model let me just pick a polygon sphere and then make it as a poly mesh 3d and then choose this one and you should be able to see the gradient here so this is topological uh, type and uh, let me just uh, go back and then just put one group id and then let me come back to the poly order and then just click it and you should be able to see I'm getting the poly, poly groups based on the polygon order. Uh, there are uh, a limited number of uh, colors which are there in the poly group assigning. So it's keeping on cycling as it's moving on forward, but every particular polygon is getting a different color. So let me just choose the point order. Again, here the colors are assigned based on the point order or the vertex points. So again, you could be able to see that's cycling, but this is giving me a nice row like uh, selection. Uh, and we have uh, uh, relative plus one so what happens in relative plus one is every time i click uh, it, it's going to add a different color to the existing one so let me just go back to this particular model and just undo and then just start clicking and you should be able to see the colors are keeping on changing when i'm choosing relative plus one what is that color i mean the color what it's existing uh, the next hue is going to be added to that particular poly, poly group uh, when i choose the minus one it, it's going to be picking the opposite side of the hue palette what it's defined in this uh, so there is a checker which is going to give me the checker pattern okay uh, so this is uh, what we have uh, in uh, this targets uh, so let me just check the coverage uh, so i'll go I'll, I'll just choose the three sides and then put full coverage and then you should be able to see this is what i have got uh, but when i choose the random and when i say 93 percent or let's sl slide it over to 35 percent uh, it's not refreshing let me just try with uh, any other model here so let me take the face so I've got the random coverage. I'm going to choose uh, one group ID and then just click it here. So what I've got is I've got uh, the normal poly grouping. I mean, a new poly grouping assigned here, but it's only covering uh, a certain uh, amount of polygons, like 35% only. So if I just increase this, uh, it is going to cover 
more amount, more range of polygons with the particular polygroup. So as I keep in, it's just randomizing the polygons and you should be able to see the number of polygons left behind are like almost um, 13%. So if I just keep increasing that, I get more or less number of polygons which are left behind for the polygroup assigning. So full coverage gives me one single uh, solid poly, uh, polygroup for the assigned uh, targets. Okay, so this is going to be a great use when you are defining polygroups uh, and generally polygroups are used in, you know, modeling and UV and wrapping and so on. So uh, explore this tool efficiently. So if you got any questions regarding this polygroup, let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the like button and then subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.